Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. What I'm going to show you guys today is how we put a smooth finish over this retaining wall. Now, we're going way back, old school on this. Generally, you'd see me use a pre-mixed bag with, uh, say, like Santa Barbara, Smooth Mission, BMI, Marble. That's all in one bag. Today, we're using a, a setup that is over there. That's, uh, uh, we're, we're mixing everything by hand, guys, where Jay actually showed how to mix this, but we're, we're putting lime, we're putting white cement, we're putting uh, gray cement, we're mixing it with sand, or he already mixed everything. Um, it's kind of a drag, but these folks want a certain color. They say, what color do they want that they would go through this extent? Uh, let's see, I'll show you over here by the pool. They want the color to be just like what's in the bowl here. The concrete manufacturer give them a sample, give them, the, give them all the materials to match that. So that is our, <clears throat> that's our job today, to match that color, which is no big deal. I'll show you something. I'll give you a couple tips, guys, of what we're going to do. All right, the fella, he's, he gave it his best shot, and it actually come out uh, pretty good. Uh, what he doesn't like, of course, are these joints right here. Yeah. Here's a tip, guys, like when Jay, he's just mixed us some. Jay and I know, mix enough to go from that corner here to go to this corner here. That way, he'll skim the first one, and I'll skim it right in back of him, and then we'll hard still trowel everything. We'll get our tops and corners, but it's got to be enough. We can't stop in the middle of a wall. Stop in the middle of the wall, then you're going to have this joint right here. Anyhow, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Jay will probably put that on a tripod and we'll show you just this one small section and when we're done with everything we'll show you uh, that too. I'll give you some tips on corners and how to get your clean edges and things like that and how to apply it uh, when you're going that old school method. I personally again prefer the modern ones where you just take the bags, throw it in, everything is pre-mixed, you don't have to add the uh, um, lime and what happens if you don't add the lime? Well, it's not as durable, flexible, uh, dependable. So anyway, you, you got to have that lime if you're going to go this old school method. So when we get started, we'll show you in a second. Okay, guys, bear with me before we show you how we ap actually apply these two coats. This, uh, we just put two coats on it. It was in the sun and now it's in the shade, obviously, but in the sun you can see every little wave, every dimple, every area that's not 100% like uh, oh, I hate to use that glass word, but very, very smooth. Now, one of the things is when you're doing this system here and they give you sand, you got to make certain that sand is very, very clean. If it has heavy grit, you'll spend hours picking the little grits out because it's got to be fine. That's the benefit of getting the uh, color coats pre-bagged, guys. And I say that because we found some grit in this and we're having a heck of a time. Anyway, we got two coats on here. And while we're on grit, clean tools, clean bucket, take the water hose, clean off the tops, clean off the bottom, hose this real well because you don't want one piece of dirt because when you have the cement on here, you take it to the bottom, now that cement gets, pulls the dirt up or the rocks and you're having a hard time. And what I'm doing now is, I mean, we're going to show you how we apply both coats, but I, I always like to get a feel for it when it's the old uh, school style because Again, I need to see what kind of grips in that bag. And uh, nothing we can't handle, there's a few. But what we do, guys, is we just go back and forth. And when it starts to dry, what I'll generally do is, rather than try to make these corners extremely crisp, because they, when you add these a lot here, they get kind of weak. So what I'll do is I'll take a float, or I'll take a, a brush, and just lightly hit it like that with water, guys. You gotta have water on it. And that strengthens them up. Then take your trowel. Go back over it, get rid of some of the brush lines or float lines, come down on it, come down, come up. What that does is it strengthens these corners because if you just have one crispy, beautiful corner, you sit on it or put a log on it or a piece of firewood or anything, it's going to crumble. So you don't want it completely crisp, guys. Always get it just a hair uh, bull nose. You hardly can't see the bull nose, but that's what I recommend. I mean, that's the way I like to do it, guys. All right, guys. Jason is putting on the, the... Well, he'll start here. He's putting on the first coat, and so am I. We're 
trying to find some areas that will show well. And we've damn near finished the job, but uh, we're trying to show some area that will show somewhat well to the camera. You notice this got a lot of big rocks in it, uh, grains of sand. That's why you put that first coat on for a little coverage, allow it to set, and then you come back with that second coat. This is kind of like a scratch coat. And now we got that first one on. Because I didn't wet this wall, I can put the second one on immediately we get over here of course you guys can't see what I'm doing here but for the sake of getting into view what I'm doing is just basically putting that next one on this one I'm going a little bit heavier we're taking it without that lime guys we'd be in trouble. In any rocks you see, which this actually has its share of rocks, um, just flick them out. It really increases the time you apply this when you pick up pebbles. But again, as I say, there's nothing we can't handle. And so, just like so, I'm using the fat. I'll take it here and then I'll I'll give myself some fat for the top, the corner. Do that, a little bit of fat there. You guys, if you ever try to do this, a tip would be to use a square trowel, not, to, not a swimming pool trowel. I use the swimming pool trowel because I'm kind of familiar with it. But I'm only using this piece to here. I'm using, this is a 20 inch trowel. I'm using only 16 inches of this trowel. Coming, and once, once you got this on, guys, it's a matter of knowing when to hit it. You'll come, you'll do your tops like so. This, this really does, out of all finishes I've shown you folks how to do, a steel trowel finish, especially going the old fashioned way with uh, bags, is one of the hardest to learn how to do. Jay and I have been here already six hours. Uh, doing the 20 feet there and plus the back sides of here, here uh, and the tops so it's we're making it look well, we're supposed to make everything look a little easier than it actually is anyway once this is set I'll show you how we continue to hard steel trowel it because this is just one stage of the job all right guys we've got this whole thing spread out and now it's just a matter of going back over it and steel troweling it uh, tops. If it kind of gets away from you, you can, for just a short while, hit it with water. Say like, for example, I'll hit this whole thing with water right down here. With the sponge float, with, they got many different tools to hit it with. I have a few brushes on my truck, a few, uh, well, a lot of different things to wet it down. What you do is you bring it back to life and then hit it again. And keep in mind, guys, I'm using only this part of my trowel. I'm not using those edges because there's too much troweling here. It's too heavy for those edges to be effective. So that's why I recommend you folks, if you're going to try to do this, use a square trowel. They start around the 12 by fives, whatever size you are comfortable with, use. Uh, again, I use bigger, bigger trowels, but I'm used to this stuff. And see that lip right there? I'm gonna leave that lip go. I'm gonna keep coming this way. And I'll take my float, clean all the crap out of it. Because again, we don't wanna pull any grit or grains anywhere. We keep our trowels Clean guys. Okay, get everything off of here. And again, I don't know if the camera can see that lip. That's okay. We take it, put a little water on here. Put, put some water on here. It's a very hot day, hot walls. Bring it back to life. 
and we just start the same process over. Steal that drown, steal it down, and we take our um, edge here, back over. If it was sun, sunny, you'd be seeing a little bit better what what I'd actually what I'm actually doing. But because we're in the shade, it's going to be a tough a tough thing to see. Now again, I've got this lip forming up here. That's okay. I'm going to leave that lip there, and I'm going to take this entire wall because. I'd rather have the lip there and then I'm gonna come back and I'll just take it here, here. But for now, if I do that, I'll lose the rest of the wall. So we just keep going. A lot of elbow grease, a lot of pressure, guys. The more pressure you put, the tighter you can get it. Can this be like glass? No. Why? Because there's sand in here. And in fact, the sand in here is pretty, pretty coarse. Uh, so we just keep, keep doing that when we're done with the whole project I'll show you I know we didn't have a lot of time to show you folks how to spread it because hot day and the camera wasn't right the uh, sun and shade but we're doing the best we can all right last time I'll show you here we wet this down wet it down hot wall so I want to bring it back to life a little life anyhow take that trial Come up, come up. In case any of you guys ever done this, uh, good thing to remember is the paper shouldn't touch the wall. Otherwise, when you're done, you pull the paper and you pull out the whole bottom. See, here, here's that sand again. We have uh, little bits of sand throughout this mix. We're trying to go a little heavier to cover all, all that extra. But you don't want to go too heavy. We're not browning. If we're going on exterior brown coat, I can put it thick. With a finish coat, if you go too thick, then you get hairline cracks and chatter marks. So it's always important, guys, to make sure you get uh, sand that's, that's right or just get it in the bags. Anyhow, uh, we're going to go ahead and finish up, and when we're done, we'll just show you everything. All right, guys, we are complete with this. Generally, I haven't used this system in ooh, 15 years. The reason is aggregate. You want the bags that are already pre-sized with the sand. That way you're not here all day. It took, it took me an extra two hours just to do this because of grains of sand sticking out here and there. But I can't blame anybody. That's what happens when you buy it from the material yard. Last thing we do is I'm getting ready to clean this up. We take our green sponge float and give a clean line here, one side. Flip it, both sides are dirty, clean it here. That'll give you a six inch window. You take your water hose now and clean it up. Anyhow, I figured I'd show you the least clean up too because that's as important as doing the actual job, especially when you have tile. Anyhow guys, my name is Kirk. It's been a long day for us. Jason on the camera, he's also tired. As usual folks, we thank you for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.